back to scene four. We are on just kind of a street, and we've got Benvolio and Mercutio entering. Remember the last time we saw Benvolio and Mercutio, they were looking for Romeo. It was the night before, um, and they were looking kind of around the Capulet Garden for that. Mercutio, where the devil should this Romeo be? Came he not home tonight? Benvolio, not to his father's. I spoke with his man. His man, by the way, that means servant. Okay. Mercutio, ah, that same pale heart hearted wench, that Rosaline, torments him so that he will sure run mad. Once again, we've got dramatic irony there, right? That he still thinks that Romeo is tormented over Rosaline, but we know that he's not. He is now fully in love with Juliet. Tybalt, or sorry, Benvolio. Tybalt, the kinsman of old Capulet, hath sent a letter to his father's house. Real quick pause. What do you think Tybalt is sending a letter to the Montague uh, household about? Remember how mad Tybalt was at the Capulet party last night? Um, so it probably has something to do with some sort of challenge or um, frustration over Romeo's presence at the party. Mercutio says that. A challenge on my life. Benvolio, Romeo will answer it. Mercutio, any man that can write may answer a letter. Benvolio, nay, he will answer the letter's master how he dares being dared. Mercutio, alas, poor Romeo, he's already dead. Stabbed with a white wench's black eye, shot through the ear with a love song, the very pin of his heart cleft with the blind bow boy's butt shaft, meaning Cupid's arrow, um, and he is a man to encounter Tybalt. Okay, um, so Mercutio identifies Romeo as already dead because he is smitten in love with who he assumes is Rosaline. Benvolio, why? What is Tybalt? Meaning, because uh, remember, he just said, is he a man to encounter Tybalt? Okay, Benvolio says, why? What's Tybalt? What's the big deal with Tybalt? Mercutio, more than a prince of cats, I can tell you. Um, Tybalt is referred to as a prince of cats. It's kind of a famous name for him, especially after this play. Um, in medieval stories, um, there were stories called Renard the, Flo the Fox, um, and Tybalt, as you can see in here, um, was the name of a cat. So that is Tybalt right there. So um, Mercutio is just kind of teasing, saying, oh, he's more than just a prince of cats. Oh, he is the courageous captain of compliments. He fights as you sing prick song, keeps time, distance, and proportion. Rest me his minim rest, one, two, and the third in your bosom. Okay, um, so Mercutio is appreciating Tybalt's skill when it comes to um, uh, sword fighting and fencing. He says he's really good, right? He knows dueling very well. Um, he, he fights with attention to detail. He observes all the formalities. He says he only needs three strikes before um, his sword is in your bosom, meaning like that's it. That's all it takes for him. He's really good at fighting. The very butcher of a silk button, a duelist, a duelist, a gentleman of the first house, of the first and second cause. Um, so not only <laughs> is Tybalt really good at fencing, uh, he, it says he would fence or fight of the first and second cause, meaning for any reason. It doesn't take a whole lot to get Tybalt to fight. Okay, he's eager for it. Ah, the immortal passado, the punto reverso, the high. Those are all different fencing terms. And so um, Rikisha is just being really animated in the way he describes how good Tybalt is at, at sword fighting. Benvolio, the what? Mercutio, the pox of such antic, lisping, affecting fantasticos, these new turners of accents. By Jesu, by Jesu, um, sorry, by Jesu, a very good blade, a very tall man, a very good whore. Why, is not this a lamentable thing, grandsire, that we should be thus afflicted with these strange flies, these fashion mongers, these perdonamies, who stand so much on the new form that they cannot at ease on the old bench? Oh, their bones, their bones. I Meaning he's, he almost focuses too much on the proper form and all that stuff. Okay, enter Romeo. Benvolio. Well, here comes Romeo, here comes Romeo. Mercutio, without his roe like a dried herring. I love that line, it's really great. Um, roe would be fish eggs and a herring is like a, a dried out salty fish. Um, and so he says he's, you know, here comes Romeo, but he's basically wasting away with love. Like, yes, all oh, that pathetic soul. Um, but I don't know, maybe the fish eggs thing could be a reference to his manhood as well. Maybe his manhood is wasting away with love. Flesh, flesh, how art thou fishified? 
Now is he for the numbers that Petrarch flowed in. Laura to his lady was but a kitchen wench. Mary, she had a better love to berhyme her. Dido a dowdy. Cleopatra a gypsy. Helen and hero, Hildings and harlots. Thisbe a gray eye or so, but not to the purpose. Signor Romeo, bonjour. There's a French salutation to your French slop. You gave us the counterfeit fairly last night. Real quick, um, as I see over here, or as I noted over there, Laura, Petrarch, um, Dido, Cleopatra, Helen, and Hero, um, Thisbe, these are all um, notable figures of European love stories or li European love uh, literature. And so, according to um, Mercutio, Romeo would think all of these beauties, these um, women who were just notable for their outstanding beauty, um, would not even compare to Rosaline. Once again, we know Romeo does not love Rosaline at this point. Okay? Um, all right. So he says, you gave us the counterfeit fairly last night. Romeo, good morrow to you both. What counterfeit did I give you? Mercutio, the slip, sir, the slip. Can you not conceive? Okay, meaning Mercutio's like, dude, you ditched us last night. What the heck? Romeo, pardon, good Mercutio. My business um, was great, and in such a case as mine, a man may strain courtesy. Meaning, look, I had really important stuff going on last night. Mercutio, that's as much as to say, such a case as yours constrains a man to bow in the hams. Okay, um, the hams are your hips, and so what he's saying here is your important business made you flex your, your behind, um, which the implication there is that, oh, you had important business. That business then in Mercutio's mind was to have sex, something to make you flex your, your hips, okay? Um, Romeo, meaning to curtsy. Mercutio, thou hast most kindly hit it. Like, yeah. Romeo, a most courteous exposition. Notice that they're playing here a lot with um, courtesy, curtsy, courteous, okay? And Mercutio says, Mercutio says, nay, I am the very pink of courtesy. Pink for flower. Um, I'll let you guys read that note there because <clears throat> it the pink is, okay, anyway. Uh, Mercutio, right. Romeo, why then is my pump well flowered? He's A pump is uh, talking about his shoe, okay? Um, and he's saying, oh, well then, I've got a very flowery decorated shoe. Mercutio says, well said. Follow me this jest now till thou hast worn out thy pump, that when the single soul of it is worn, the jest may remain after the wearing soul, singular. He says, look, the jest will wear out the shoe, then be all alone. Okay, so they're, they're playing back and forth with words, first with curtsy and courtesy, then with pink, then with pump. Um, and uh, so now they're talking about shoes, and so they're kind of playing with, with, with all of these words. They're kind of a having a battle of wits then. Uh, Romeo says, oh, single, soul, just, sing solely singular for the singleness, meaning basically weak, okay? Mercutio, come between us, good Benvolio, my wits faint. Romeo, switch and spurs, switch and spurs, or I'll cry a match, meaning you better drive your wit harder or I'll claim, claim the victory in this match of wordplay. Mercutio, Nay, if thy wits run the wild goose chase, I have done. For thou hast more of the wild goose in one of thy wits than I am sure I have in my whole five. Was I with you there for the goose? Meaning, you are only there for, for jokes, man. Romeo, thou wast never with me for anything when thou wast not there for the goose. Meaning, you are only here for for um, this wordplay and fun and all that stuff. Mercutio, I will bite thee by the ear for that jest. Romeo, nay, good goose, bite not. Mercutio, thy wit is a very bitter sweeting, and is as a most sharp sauce. Romeo, and is it not well served in, into a sweet goose? So again, now we're playing with the, the images of goose and ge or geese. Mercutio, oh, here's a wit of chevril that stretches from an inch narrow to an L broad. Meaning, yeah, you were making fun of me for my, um, you know, not a good comeback, and you've got one that is barely anything. Romeo, I stretch it out for that word broad, which added to the goose proves thee far and wide a broad goose. Mercutio, why is this not better now than groaning for love? Now art thou sociable, now art thou Romeo, now art thou what thou art, by art as well as by nature, for this driveling love is like a great natural that runs lolling up and down to hide his bauble in a hole. Okay, um, he's essentially saying, look, You've been pursuing something that um, is all very um, uh, physical instead of um, instead of as emotional as you're making it out to be. 
talking about love, by the way. Benvolio, stop there, stop there. Mercutio, thou desirest me to stop in my tail against the hair, meaning, this is what I do, man. You're going to tell me to stop? Benvolio, thou wouldst else have made thy tail large. Mercutio, oh, thou art deceived. I would have made it short, for I was come to the whole depth of my tail and meant indeed to occupy the argument no longer. I mean, I was about to stop. <clears throat> Romeo, oh, here's goodly gear, meaning good stuff for joking, because they see the nurse. Okay, and the nurse is kind of like a fool in this play. She's kind of the, the goofy one. And so they see the nurse and they're like, ooh, let's, let's have fun here. Okay, so as the nurse enters, a sail, a sail. Okay, um, and the movie version of this, uh, the old movie in particular, um, does a really good job of showing this. Um, he, he's kind of making fun of her like she's as big as a boat, right? So her, um, uh, whatever you would call this, her veil, um, kind of looks like a sail. And so he goes, a sail, a sail. Um, and I think it was a really clever way to, to make that line work. Um, Benvolio says, two, two, a shirt and a smock, meaning he sees a man and a woman um, because we have the nurse and Peter who is kind of like a servant within uh, or a person that serves the house of Capulet. Nurse, Peter, Peter, anon. Nurse, my fan, Peter. Mercutio, good Peter to hide her face for her fan's the fairer face. I love that. Basically like her, the fan would be a lot more attractive than her actual face. So hide her face. Um, nurse, could you morrow, gentlemen? Mercutio, good ye, good God ye good den, fair gentlewoman. Nurse, is it a good is it good den? I mean good evening. Um, Mercutio, tis no less, I tell you, not for, for the body hand of the dial is now upon the prick of noon. Out upon you, what a man you are. By the way, um the dial upon the prick of noon. Um, that could be <laughs> a um, sexual reference as well for an erection. Um, if you think about like the, the a dial, like a sundial and how it um, kind of has like a, one of those little things like that, um, it, it would be pointing directly upward. And so it could be referring to, like I said, you got it. Okay. So that's why nurse goes out upon you. What a man you are like kind of offended. Romeo, one gentlewoman that God hath made for himself to mar. I Meaning this guy just screws himself over by the words that he says. Nurse, by my troth, it is well said. For himself to mar, quoth a gentleman, can any of you tell me where I may find the young Romeo? Romeo, I can tell you, but young Romeo will be older when you have found him than he was when you sought him. I'm the youngest of that name for fault of a worse. By the way, it's clear based on what Romeo is saying here that he doesn't know that the nurse is Juliet's nurse. He doesn't really understand that. Or he's not, I don't know, he's not putting two and two together, even though um, he probably did see her last night at the party. Nurse, you say well. Mercutio, yay, is the worst well, very well took in faith, wisely, wisely. Nurse, if you be he, sir, I desire some confidence with you. Benvolio, she will indict him to supper. Okay, so what's going on here? Um, she doesn't mean she uh, desires a confidence with, with him. She means conference, like a meeting. I, des I desire to talk with you. Um, and Benvolio is teasing her because he hears that she meant conference, but said confidence. Um, and so he's teasing her by saying she will indict him to some supper, which he means invite, of course, but he's doing it to be silly. These are both called malapropisms. Okay, um, what that means is it's, as you can see, a ludicrous misuse of a word, especially by confusion with one of a similar sound. Um, so Mercutio already enjoys making fun of people and teasing people. Then the nurse shows up and she's got, you know, uh, in the movie, I love it. She's got this big old um, thing going on. She is just opening herself up to a whole lot of, of teasing here. Okay, especially as she's using these malapropisms. Mercutio, a bod, a bod, a bod, so ho. Okay, he's calling her a prostitute. Romeo, what hast thou found? Mercutio, no hair, sir, sir, unless a hair, sir, in a Lenten pie that is something stale and whore ere it be spent. Okay, so Mercutio continues teasing her. He says, she, well, never mind, she can't be a prostitute. She's not pretty enough, unless she is using her ugliness to hide her promiscuity, right? Like, unless that's all just a cover. 
and he starts to sing. I am not going to sing for you, uh, but he sings an old hare whore and an old hare whore. It is very good meant in Lent, but a hare that is whore is too much for a score when it whores ere it be spent. Romeo, will you come to your father's? Will to dinner thither? Romeo, I will follow you. Mercutio, farewell, ancient lady, farewell. Singing, lady, 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 which is a line from an old ballad called Chase Susanna. So earlier he was talking about, um, or making fun of her for being a prostitute, an ugly prostitute at that. Um, and now he's making fun of the fact of how ugly she is that she would not be able to be that. Okay. Now Mercutio and Benvolio exit. Um, and apparently, apparently the nurse did not appreciate being called an ugly whore um, because she's pretty upset. So she says, nurse, Mary, farewell. I pray you, sir, what saucy merchant was this that was so full of his ropery? We got another malapropism because um, she meant roguery, which would be the conduct of a rascal. Um, by the way, these malapropisms are are really for the effect of comedy, right? Like, again, we want to entertain the crowd as we're watching this play. And so these are just kind of silly ways to, to show how goofy she is. Romeo, ah, he's a gentleman nurse that loves to hear himself talk and will speak more in a minute than he will stand to in a month, meaning he's all talk, okay? Mercutio is just a goof. Nurse, and to speak anything against me, I'll take him down, and I were lustier than he is, and twenty such jacks, and if I cannot, I'll find those that shall. Scurvy knave, I am none of his flirt gills, I am none of his skeins mates, and thou must stand by too and suffer every knave to use me at his pleasure? Peter, I saw no man use you a pleasure. If I had, my weapon should quickly have been out, I warrant you. I dare draw as soon as another man if I see occasion in a good quarrel and the law on my side. Okay, the nurse, again, deeply offended, as as one might be, by being called an ugly prostitute. Um, and so she is very, very upset. And she said, oh, I'll get him. Um, and then she she turns to Peter and's like, well, what about you, dude? You just stood by and you were giggling right along with them. And Peter's like, ah, it was all fine. If I would have thought it was a problem, I would have actually done something about it. He didn't even think it was a problem. Nurse. Now, afore God, I am so vexed that every part about me quivers, scurvy knave. Pray you, sir, a word, and as I told you, my young lady bade me inquire you out when she bade me say I will keep to myself. But first, let me tell you, if ye should lead her into a fool's paradise, as they say, it were a very gross kind of behavior, as they say, for the gentlewoman is young, and therefore if you should deal double with her, Truly it were an ill thing to be offered to any gentlewoman and a very weak dealing. I love this. The nurse gets a little bit um, big brother protective here um, because she, uh, cause she basically tells him, if you are just screwing with uh, Juliet and you, you're not really honorable in your intentions, okay, then you are very, you know, that's a weak dealing. You you don't do that. <laughs> okay, so she's kind of warning him, um, you know, you know, don't, don't mess with my sister except you know, she's the nurse, right? Romeo, nurse, commend me to thy lady and mistress. I protest unto thee. I mean, tell, tell Juliet um, that, you know, I, I wish her the best, truly. Nurse, good heart, and in faith I will tell her as much. Lord, Lord, she will be a joyful woman. Romeo, what wilt thou tell her, nurse? Dost thou, thou dost not mark me? Nurse, I will tell her, sir, that you do protest, which, as I take it, is a gentlemanlike offer. By the way, again, another malapropism, she means purpose, okay? Meaning that your, your intentions are honorable. Romeo, <sighs> okay, bid her devise some means to come to shrift this afternoon, and there she shall at Friar Lawrence's cell be shrived and married. Here is for thy pains. Okay, so Romeo was able to work out wedding plans for Romeo and Juliet. Um, notice it is this afternoon. So they have known each other for less than 24 hours because they only met last night. And they're ready to get married. That's a little quick, in my opinion. Uh, hopefully in your opinion as well. Okay, so then he offers her some money um, for, for the message. And the nurse says, no, truly, sir, not a penny. Romeo says, go to, I say you shall. I mean, come on, just take it. And so she does. The nurse, this afternoon, sir, well, she shall be there. Remember, um, he is has told her to devise some means to come to shrift. So pretend like you're going to confession. Go to Friar Lawrence's cell, and there we'll get married this afternoon. 
Romeo, and stay, good nurse, behind the abbey wall. Within this hour, my man shall be with thee and bring thee cords made like a tackled stair. So he's, he's sending a rope ladder to the nurse, which to the high top gallant of my joy must be my convoy in the secret night. Okay, so the purpose of the rope ladder, if you remember, um, it, Juliet was up upon a balcony. So what happens when a couple gets married? Well, they have to consummate their marriage in their wedding night. And so the rope ladder is really to make it possible for Romeo to ascend to her balcony so that they can enjoy their wedding night. Farewell, be trusty and I'll quit thy pains. Farewell, commend me to thy mistress. Nurse, now God in heaven bless thee, hark you, sir. Romeo, what sayest thou, my dear nurse? Nurse, is your man secret? The man was talking about the man that is going to bring the rope ladder. Is he a secret guy? Meaning, will he be able to keep the secret? Did you never hear the say? Two may keep counsel, putting one away. Meaning, only two people, well, two people can keep a secret as long as one of them is out of the way. Which basically means, you can't have a secret between two people. It doesn't work. Someone's going to blab. Romeo, I warrant thee, my man is as true as steel. Nurse, well, sir, my mistress is the sweetest lady. Lord, Lord, when t'was a little prating thing, oh, there is a nobleman in town, one Paris that would fain lay knife aboard. But she, good soul, had as lief see a toad, a very toad as see him. Okay, so he's, he's telling Romeo, like, you are one lucky guy, Romeo, or she's telling Romeo, you are one lucky guy, Romeo, because there's somebody else who wants Juliet too. But once she saw you, she could only see him as a very toad. I anger her sometimes and tell her that Paris is the proper man, but I'll warrant you when I say so, she looks as pale as any clout in the versal world. Doth not Rosemary and Romeo begin both with a letter? By the way, real quick, Rosemary is a token of remembrance, usually of death. So it's interesting that she's connecting Romeo's name with Rosemary, a token of remembrance and death. Just kind of an interesting connection there. But she, I, we don't know why she's asking this at this point, but, um, but she does. And Romeo says, I, nurse, what of that? Both with an R. Ah, mocker, that's the dog's name because an R sounds like a growl. Er. R is for the... No, I know it begins with some other letter. And she hath the prettiest, prettiest sententious of it. Um, again, malapropism, she means sentences. Of you and Rosemary, that it would do you good to hear it. Romeo, commend me to thy lady. Nurse, I a thousand times. Romeo exits. Peter, Peter, anon. Peter, take my fan and go before and apace. Go ahead of me quickly is what she means. And that concludes Act 2, Scene 4.